What's up everybody, Kevin Barnett back in the Carbide 3D Studio and today I'm going to take you through all the details on our brand new drag knife. It's the Stingray from Carbide 3D. I'll give you the ins, the outs, I've done a lot of testing with it, we'll talk about where it excels, where you might find your struggles and how to get it dialed in. It's going to open up a whole new world of materials for you on your Shapeoko machines or Nomad. Don't forget about the Nomad. So let's, uh, let's dive in. First thing we want to do is go through the box. What are you getting when you purchase the Stingray? Well, you're getting 15 different blades. So we're going to give you three angles of blades, five blades per angle. You're also going to get three different springs. So three different tensions, depending upon what you're cutting, you're going to want to use a different tension on the cutter itself. Three main parts to this guy, and you're going to undo it right there. The outer collet, the actual knife assembly, and the carrier. So when you look at the knife assembly, this is a magnetized knife assembly. You can pull the blade right out. You don't have to change your cut height in order to change your blade. You can actually do it without. This assembly does come apart if you need. You can unscrew it, but you won't need to unscrew it very often. So you can in fact take it apart for cleaning. So you will have some materials in there depending upon what you're cutting. And put that back together. You can go ahead and set your blade height. Make sure you have that collet spaced off. And you're gonna set your blade height manually here. Tighten this collet and you're all set. Once you have that blade height set, you select your spring. You can put your spring in, put your main assembly in, take the outer collet and screw it back together. A bit of detailed information on the three different kinds of blades. Why would you use one? Why would you use the other? Why do we include three? The 45 degree blade, that is your workhorse right there. That is your middle of the road up to about 0.5 millimeters thick. It'll cut a lot of stuff. It'll be quite effective at cutting a whole range of material, vinyls, papers, all kinds of stuff. Your 30 degree is gonna be the fine detail blade. If you're gonna go down to working with a vellum or a tracing paper or some other sort of fine, thin material, go to the 30 degree. The 60 degree is gonna be for the thicker stock. Cutting plastic, cutting poster board, getting through that foam. Anything with some real depth to it, get to the 60 degree. And you're just gonna to have to experiment, figure out which one works best for which material. All right, I'm gonna be honest with you here. If you wanna cut a ton of vinyl, then I think you should buy a Cricut Cut or a Silhouette. They're purpose-built machines that are exceptional at their job. But if you want to explore the world of vinyl and poster board and other materials that you could not cut before with your Shape Oco or CNC, then you should try the Stingray. It also comes at a much lower cost and you don't have to store another machine. This is where the Stingray really excels. Flexibility for you, the Shape Oco owner. All right, let's head downstairs and see the setup that I put together and get to some testing. First thing I did was throw down a cutting mat, 36 by 24 is what I had on hand, really nice size, and then some tacky spray. I tried this spray first, it turned out to be way too strong and it went everywhere and got stuck on everything. This was not the hot tip. Later on I went back and used some tacket over and over, that was the way to go. This spreadable stuff is what you want to put on your mat. Once the entire board was coated in tacket over and over, it performed much more evenly. I had much better results with different materials. The first thing I set out cutting was vinyl, and it cut it beautifully once I got the knife height dialed in. Set that knife height by hand, go ahead and take the Stingray and drag it across the vinyl to make sure it cuts just the top layer and not the backer. Once that's the case, you'll have good results. Next up, a couple different kinds of glitter paper, both of which perform fairly well. You just have to be able to get them off of the surface. They have a paper backing. That is the main thing, is getting the paper backing not to stick to the cutting mat. They cut quite well. Some others didn't cut as well. Felt? Yeah. No. But foam was money. Got some really nice clean lines out of the foam. Even in tight turns, it pulled it a little bit but tended to maintain the design, even on tiny little fingertips of people in this particular fire scene. As you can see, the detail is there. 
And on the fire, you get nice clean lines with sharp turns. This is good material. Next up was plastic poster board. This was a sweet spot for the tool. The Stingray did incredible detail, cut right through it. It stuck quite well to the mat and it peeled up off the mat quite well also. You could get really detailed. You'll see it'll pull up the inner cut here, but it pops right out eventually. And you end up with a really nice stencil. Love having a stencil with that kind of detail that you can then throw anywhere you want, throw some paint on it. One, two, three in a row. The detail was on point. And this was just an early test. Look at that. Spider-Man, Spider-Man. On to paper. Any poster board paper you can cut. Use the designs that are on the paper or cut out your own shapes. Here I was cutting clouds out of clouds. And when taking it off the cutting mat, I found that you needed a scraper of some kind. This is kind of a little sliding knife that you can use to get underneath the paper and free it up without tearing the backing off. You just have to be kind of cautious with it, but you'll get a feel for it. You'll experiment with it and the results speak for themselves. On to regular poster board. I cut in reverse to utilize the glossy side of the poster board and that helped it release again from the cutting mat from that tacket over and over. This was a second cut and once I got it freed, Looks nice. I'll show you a little bit of the difference in some of the blades. So this was cut with a 30 degree blade and there are a few areas on these small corners where it struggled. It struggled to change direction. It struggled to cut through. So this was not ideal, for sure not ideal. And it was harder to get off the surface. I went back and cut with the steeper blade, the 60 degree, and this one came out almost completely clean. On the software side of things, I'm using standard Carbide Create Contour tool pathing. As of now, we don't have any specific tool pathing in Carbide Create yet for the drag knife. There are two software solutions out there for you. I have them both linked in the description below. One is an editor. It's an open source tool called DXF to G-Code. It's a DXF to G-Code translator. It will let you add the swivels that are necessary to make sharp corners. There's also an exhaustive article on the detailed testing and reasoning behind what goes into those particular moves. It's really interesting stuff. If you're a Fusion 360 acolyte, a fine intelligent gentleman from Europe went ahead and developed a plugin that is specifically designed to work with the drag knife. So my question with this tool is, where does it excel? What is its story? Why would you want it? You can cut large format stuff. You simply can't do that in a crit cut or a silhouette. They cut different materials, but you're not gonna be able to cut in a standard machine a giant piece that is both tall and wide. So that's where this is really gonna excel for you. If you wanna make party favors, decorations, stencils, those things that are really large. It cut foam terrifically well. It cut poster board with ease. It cut plastic poster board into stencils that were really nice and totally usable. I was really pleased with the plastic poster board. It opens up all kinds of possibilities for anything made of that type of thin plastic material or a heavy duty cardstock. This is where you're gonna find that the Stingray shines and becomes a part of your shop that adds value. And adding value is something that could be different things for you. Could be money, could be fun, could be getting somebody else out into the shop to enjoy the wonders of CNC without the noise, without the dust, and making something that maybe appeals to them a little bit more. However it is you define success, we're trying to help you get there. Thanks for being here on Carbide 3D. We'll see you again soon.